Hello again and welcome. Today's video is going to be my overview of the Robert Sorby Pro Edge sharpening system. Uh, for those of you that have followed me on Facebook and also on my channel, I've had a CBN uh, sharpening system for a number of years now and over those years I built it up to what I had. I've been intrigued with the Sorby Pro Edge, I've seen it demonstrated, I've actually used it uh, at a show and I was impressed with it but took a little while to decide to take the plunge. Anyhow, I decided a couple of weeks ago to buy one. So I bought mine from Ed Oliver at Oliver's Wood Turning. Uh, spoke to Ed for a, for a little while asking some advice and which way he would go for my needs and his advice as usual is always sound. So it arrived, I set it up and I used it to well, I won't say reprofile, I wanted to replicate as near as possible the the grinds, the wings, everything that I had on my tools uh, for a number of years and I wanted to see if it could replicate it. Uh, well, replicated it certainly did very, very easily. It is an extremely shallow learning curve. There's a slightly different technique to using this than using a grinder. But uh, I was that impressed with it, I've actually sold my grinder now um, and the proceeds from that more than paid for the system I've got. Um, there's a couple of little extras I might get in the future, but I love it. It's so easy to use out of the box. And I'm not going to knock my other system because it served me well, but <coughs> I wish I'd started with this in on the first sort of year that I started turning. However, enough of that. What I'm going to do is go through it, how I set it up for my use. Um, there are many variants I'm sure that you can obtain from it, but I wanted to replicate what I had and it's done it spot on with the setup that I've got now. So without further ado, we'll go over to the Pro Edge and I'll take you through how I use it and how to use it or how I use it, let me put it that way, to get the best results from it. So out of the box you get the machine, you get the standard large tool platform, two Tommy bars for altering the tracking on the belt which I have to say is perfect out of the box, an allen key, a ball end hex key, the manual, fingernail grind jig, skew grinding jig, metal V block for the standard grinds on a bowl gouge, spindle gouge etc. Also your spindle roughing gouge and the boss into which the fingernail jig fits and that goes over the bar here but we'll go into more detail as the video progresses. You also get three belts, you get a 60 grit zirconium a 120 grit aluminium oxide and a 240 grit aluminium oxide and I'll go through their various uses as the video goes on. And there were two items that I purchased in excess of the deluxe set and that is the Pro Set and the extended fingernail jig and that has three holes in it and I use the hole nearest the belt for my spindle gouges and this hole for my bowl gouges and that way I'm able to replicate the grind I'm looking for and the pro set enables me to get an exact protrusion of the gouge from the fingernail jig each time so I get a consistent setting and a consistent grind. I only use the 45 degree as it happens and that's for my bowl gouges and spindle gouges except for the 3 8 spindle gouge and I use the 40 mark. And those are the two extras that I purchased. Now, the first thing you notice with this machine is the small footprint and it is secured by means of four location points which I've merely put washers and screws in down to the bench top and it is as solid as a rock. I'm starting on this side of the machine before we go any further actually the company recommend and it is common sense to wear eye protection and also some form of PPE, personal protection equipment like a dust mask or a respirator because you are creating particles 
because you're removing steel at the end of the day even only when you're just touching up the edge. I'm starting on the right hand side of the machine because this is where the belt guard is and the pulley guard and that is removed quite easily just by two wing nuts and then that allows you access to change the belts etc and another recommendation is that when you've changed a belt always replace the guard for safety reasons and I'll go to the other side of the machine now where all the main controls are and angle location holes. Starting at the top of the machine at the, on the left hand side of it uh, working down you have a lever here and that is your belt tensioner you slacken that off to remove your belt and to replace the belt is simplicity simplicity even if I could say it itself now as I explained out of the box the tracking is is spot on so you apply the tension lever switch on and it'll center itself and it's the same every time so no need to alter this little chappy here which is the tensioning mechanism and <coughs> I'm not actually going to alter it because it's running perfectly you put a tommy bar into the collar here and a tommy bar into the threaded rod here and you loosen off the collar twist the threaded arm and that <coughs> like with any other machine that is uh, has a belt driven situation that moves the belt backwards and forwards and then you tighten up so that's the use of those two tommy bars but as I say I'm not going to bother using that because it's running perfectly further down the machine here there are several holes and a hole here this hole locates the the table and by means of moving the table into these holes you achieve various degrees on that table now at the front there is a representation of all the holes and their angles corresponding angles very conveniently at the front here so let's just say we're going to put the table at 45 degrees you have this screwed a uh, threaded screw here and that goes in and then 45 degrees is that hole there so I locate this pin into that hole and tighten up and we're at 45 degrees okay so the tables are 45 degrees now there is a groove here now that groove is to locate a couple of jigs first off you've got the V block and that's for and I will show you this in use um, that is for your gouges for a standard grind uh, whatever angle you require you would alter the table to the corresponding angle there and the same goes for the skew jig that slots into the groove and again I'll show you it in operation and this is for sharpening your skews to remove the table to use the uh, the fingernail jig is very simple you merely unscrew it and take him out and as you know I'm not the most dexterous person in the world and you slot your fingernail boss over the main arm here and then place your fingernail jig into whichever hole you require to get the sweep and the angle that you require so it's simplicity itself the main advantage of any sharpening system whether it be a grinder or this is repeatability and what I must say I was impressed with with this that it is repeatable with no setup with a grinder you do have to be meticulous in setting up your jig in relation to the wheels etc I'm not saying that's a problem but it is something that you have to get exactly right with this it's all set up it's literally works out of the box okay I'll change the camera angle again now and we'll go through the sharpening process and how I achieve the grinds that I've had for years on this okay, machine now to sharpen my half inch bowl gouge or touch up the edge I should say <coughs> first of all I put the boss on to the rod and then locate the ball gouge at 
the 45 degree location on the pro set and as I, I think I've said apart from my 3 8 spindle gouge all my gouges have that protrusion which is about two inches now there are three holes on this jig here uh, and I found again I keep stressing this is for my personal requirements I use the furthest hole for my bowl gouges and I use the nearest hole to the belt for the spindle gouges so you place that in in my case as I say the, f the nearest hole to me turn the machine on and do one wing at a time you can do your left wing first and then do your right wing and then do a complete sweep and you will see there hopefully the camera will pick it up you've got a perfect edge and bevel on both sides now, as I keep stressing, these are exactly the same profile, bevel angle, etc. that I had previously. My bowl gouges are around 50 degrees, my spindle gouge, the half inch is 45 degrees, and I have around 40 degrees on the spindle gouge, on the 3 8 spindle gouge. Now for my bowl gouges, I use the same settings. The brilliance of this, as I explained, like with any jig, I suppose, is repeatability, which means when you're using a bowl gouge, everything is set, all you do is put it in and touch it up. And literally, it only needs a couple of passes. Um, another thing that I found, um, other people might disagree with me, the 60 grit is absolutely superb at reprofiling. Um, it removes an awful lot of metal and really does create very little heat. So that is a brilliant belt for major pro reprofiling work. Then the 120 grit is what I use for my touch-up. The 240 grit, to be quite honest with you, I don't use. If I'm working on a bowl, I've got my bowl gouges, I just touch it up on the 120 grit. I don't think the 240 grit is needed for your gouges, scrapers, etc. 120 is ideal. Uh, the 240 is great for skews, but you can get attachments, as I've explained. You can get uh, um, a honing wheel that goes onto the side here and goes into the bottom uh, spindle and you can do that if you wish. I actually strop my skews occasionally but I have to be honest the 120 grit off the tool is brilliant and be mindful especially for beginners the finer your edge the less time it's going to last and the quality of cut from a 120 grit for me is is perfect. So that's just me but there you go and it means that I just keep that belt on and that's the only belt that I use to touch up because you don't reprofile very often. I had to reprofile all my tools only slightly but the main problem was the skews because all my skews were radiused. I now have one radius skew and a straight across skew which I will show you as we progress. Regarding the actual belts, uh, it is worthy to note that you can obtain either aluminium oxide, zirconium, ceramic or trizact. Uh, if you go to the website or indeed ask Ed, he will go through their various capabilities. I've gone for my normal use 60 and 120 grit ceramic because of their cutting capabilities and their longer life to the aluminium oxide. I have a couple of 240 grit aluminium oxide belts. I was going to use them but I'll be honest with you the 120 grit is fine for touching up all my tools in between turning so I will be going personally with the 60 and the 120 only um, as far as usage is concerned. You can, you can get diamond belts as well, they are an expensive investment. If you feel that is the way to go then that's fine. At the moment I don't feel I need to, to, to do that. Um, they do have an extremely long life obviously but um, whether you feel that investment is necessary for the amount of turning you do that is only 
a decision that you can Gauges, make. As I say, your ball gouge there, and just to show you, this is my half inch spindle gouge. Again, I use the same setting on the Pro Set. So in honesty, I could have done that and just make a stop like I had on my other because I use exactly the same setting each time and I never alter the angle of the leg here. I found the right angle which happened to be out of the box for me uh, which gives me the grinds I'm looking for but you have that flexibility of altering that leg too if you should so wish. And then as I explained I put the spindle gouges in the hole nearest the belt and the same thing applies here, turn the machine on, do one wing at a time and then a complete sweep and that's all that's needed seconds as you can see there from the the two two sweeps if you like and the and the one complete sweep that hasn't moved that bevel at all it's exactly the same as it was before I sharpened it now here I've got the tool platform placed back on the machine at 45 degrees and let's just say we were going to do a standard straight over grind which I don't have in any of my armory I'm not going to do it on here um, you merely place your gouge in the v-block and then present it to the belt and literally in a nice smooth motion just turn him round and that will give you a straight over grind as quickly as that. I find this very handy for scrapers to make sure and parting tools to make sure that it is at 90 degrees to the belt. So that's what we'll do next. So now we've got my thin parting tool. Now on all my tools I've marked the relevant figure on here so I know what the setup is, angle etc to get what I want on here. Now that's 25 so I merely loosen off the the nut here and locate the 25 degree slot in the back tighten up and this is where the v-block comes in handy for me you present the tool now you can see there we've got a perfect edge there no facets or anything and I'm just going to place it up after setting up and turn on the machine that makes sure it's at 90 degrees, off it to the machine, touch it, spin him over and you'll see again that's replicated exactly what I had before. So this, this little chappy, although I don't use it for what it was intended, is ideal for squaring things up. It also works on your bench chisels as well, just for a quick touch-up. Not that I'm much into flat work, but it's handy to know. Now, possibly one of the best things, for me anyway, is the skew jig. Now, the thing is with the skew, you have to lower the body, which is no problem at all. The reason for that is that I have reshaped my skew chisels to the recommendation from Robert Sorby. Now this is my one inch skew chisel and that now has a 15-15 bevel which is a, a 30 degree included angle. And to achieve that, the same method, you merely loosen off and tighten up on the 15 degree slot. Now the only small criticism but I, it's very difficult with I presume with a design like this is that if I'm going to use that which I will at 15 degrees I present my tool and it is fine this way okay I can I can touch up there no problem but when I go this way it folds on the motor housing but it's an easy solution and this is where it is so versatile you un unscrew the unscrews either side I had the other one loose anyway tighten up if you wish and I find putting it 
on the horizontal here and then that gives you complete freedom to do the sharpening. Now you can see I've used it, there's a little, you know, few marks on there. So I'll just touch it up. So you put it against there and just present it to the belt. That's all that's needed. And the same the other side. Just hold it against the jig, present it to the belt, touch it to the belt. And there we have a perfect edge. Now with my radius skew, I've also got a 15 degree angle on that now, and I find it works brilliantly. Now this isn't Sorby's fault, uh, there is a collar here, because this is a converted tang tool from Simon Hope, which I've used, which I use, and that folds the bar here. But it's not a great problem, because all I do is take the, the blade out of the handle, and that allows me then to touch up the tool. And there we've got touched up in seconds. I don't use the skew as much as I should, but it is no problem removing, uh, just loosening this off and moving it up. And I find what is nice about this as well is that you can have an angle which suits you, which makes it a lot easier for when you're actually doing your sharpening operation. Now as far as scrapers are concerned, again, very easy operation. I've set the table, this particular scraper, all my scrapers bar one, um, the smallest one, have got a negative rake. I've got a relief angle here. This one is 45, 25, 25 relief angle. Very rarely need to touch that. Uh, I do obviously use a honing card quite often, but if I want to touch up that 45 degree, again, simplicity itself, and just bring it up to the belt, move around, and there you can see this here is where I've been playing with various angles and this is an angle I like for this tool. So a perfect bevel. And the same thing goes for square scrapers as well. I've got a negative angle on my square scraper but um, it's 2580 so I'll alter this to 80 degrees which is down in that hole there, tighten up the table and we're away to go. Again, the negative rake very rarely needs topping up, purely and simply because you're only touching up the main body. Now this is where I use this jig again to square the scraper to the belt. Okay, so again, we're doing the main bevel, the 80 degree bevel, hold it against the V-block and give it a couple of movements across and there you have a perfect bevel again and it's ready to use but again as I say with scrapers normally I don't go to the grinder I just give them a quick go with a honing diamond honing card well those are my thoughts of the Robert Sorby Pro Edge I hope you find it of some use uh, I love the system personally uh, and if you're thinking of upgrading or indeed getting your first sharpening system it is certainly worth considering. I'll put links to Ed Oliver's, Oliver's wood turning website in the description below. Uh, if you have any questions I'm sure Ed will be more than happy to answer them for you. Don't forget next month on May the 11th and 12th at the NEC in Birmingham make a central 2019 and I'll be on the Yorkshire Grit Stand on the Saturday and the Sunday. Look forward to seeing you there and having a chat and showing you Yorkshire Grit in operation. And we are also offering the Mully Bowl, and I'm pronouncing it correctly now. I heard a few Australians telling me I was pronouncing it wrong. It's not Mali, it's Mally. Well, the Mally Bowl will be on offer for every Yorkshire Grit tin purchased. You'll get a raffle ticket. And if you win the raffle, you'll be the dubiously proud owner of my Mally Bowl. 
Okay, well, thanks very much indeed for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you very soon. Cheers now.